Flux Marine was founded in 2018, and the mission of Flux Marine was to electrify the boating industry. Um, so we're now at the point to where we have a 115 horsepower outboard powered by a 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, roughly the same size battery that you would find in a Tesla Model Y, um, that we've been able to partner with different boat brands to offer different electric boats um, for many different applications. This one is our rigid inflatable that we've partnered with high field boats on. Um, we also have partners with flagship on pontoon boats, scout with center consoles and dual console boats. Um, and the idea behind what we've done is no maintenance, a full day of boating, instant torque and acceleration power for that sporty luxury performance feel they're used to with some of the electric vehicles that you have here at the symposium today. Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where here I am at the Northeast Electric Vehicle Showcase. And uh, here's my new friend, Dalen, who's here from Flux Marine. And he's got this really cool pickup truck. It's called an F-150 Lightning. And behind it, he's towing this awesome boat right here, which we're going to learn about. But what's really cool is what powers this boat from Flux Marine. Welcome from Rhode Island. He's down. And we appreciate him coming out here to the symposium today, the showcase. We're going to ask Dalen all about this. We're going to go to school and learn about some boating, electric boating. So welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave. Today, it's called Out of Spec Boating. Let's get into it. Dan, tell me a little bit about Flux Marine. I'm curious, I've, I've heard of the company. I don't really know anything about it. How many employees? Can you tell me a little bit about the structure? Sure, so by introduction, I'm, I'm Dalen. I'm one of the co-founders of Flux Marine along with uh, two of my other guys, very, very talented engineers. And uh, we started the company in 2018. It was an idea in college and we started pitching it around, raising some money. At that point in time, electrification was very, very new. Um, and no one was quite doing it in the boating industry. So we grew up with a lifetime of boating experience, um, you know, in our teenage years, rebuilding old outboard motors, working on boats, and they were constantly breaking down. And with the onset of electrification in the auto industry and the new technologies that were emerging, we felt we could apply a lot of that tech to solve some of our problems specifically in the boating industry. And that's wow. how Flux Marine started. So you're the man. This, this is your company. I'm one of the guys, Don't that's humble, right. My <laughs> that's amazing. How many employees do you have now? So we have 50 full-time employees and they range from a diverse background set, a sales team, a marketing team, software team, um, folks who focus specific on powertrain, manufacturing, production. Where do you actually uh, assemble the motors? And we are assembling everything out of our production facility in Bristol, Rhode Island, which is about 20 minutes north of Newport. Now, this is what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs> That's amazing. Hats off to you. Um, tell me a little bit about just the specs on this boat. Not so much the technology and the electrification, but top speed. How does it compare it with a whole shot if you're pulling a a, a skier up is there like an electric car. It's got a lot of torque. I would imagine an electric boat would as well. Exactly. So we have 115 horsepower outboard that's in the back of this 22 foot center console. It tops out at about 32, 33 miles an hour, depending on how many people you have on board in the sea state, um, which is plenty fast, right? Um, you have enough range for a full day of boating at wide open throttle that's somewhere around 35 to 40 miles. And if you were to cut it back to planning speed, you know, you might add another 10 to 20 miles and then you could troll for almost infinite number of miles, you know, over a hundred miles of trolling. Um, we find that most of our customers for this application go anywhere between five to 10 miles, which means that we have an order of magnitude more range than what they typically need for the average boating day. Right. This is our 2022 um, F-150 Lightning pickup truck that we use for all of our customer deliveries and demos. It's been a fantastic vehicle, um, has incredible towing capacity, and uh, it's super reliable. We're charging it you know, up and down the 95 highway. Um, from here to Florida quite frequently. And um, she's been a really, really working, working horse girl for us yeah. uh, these last couple you, of years. You using any of the Tesla superchargers with the adapter? We absolutely have been. Um, yeah. So they're starting to open up some more right. that are compatible. No, that, that's, that's good. But what's behind this thing <laughs> is really the showpiece. Tell me about this, uh, not only this boat, but also a little bit about maybe Flux Flux Marine in general, and then maybe we can get into this high field inflatable. This yes. Is, this is an awesome rig. I love center consoles, and I definitely love center consoles that I can bounce off things with, so that's good. <laughs> Me too. So our outboard motor has 115 horsepower, equivalent horsepower, continuously rated at the propeller shaft. So that's really, really important to understand um, the difference between an electric motor and then an internal combustion engine motor. We can accelerate 
close to upwards almost with 175 horsepower. So that's why we have that whole shot um, that helps that you have access to for upwards of five to 10 seconds that you can pull very instantly that gives you the acceleration and planning power of an engine that's almost one and a half times the size. Right. And then, and then where are the batteries that are located in this particular setup that you have here? Are they underneath? I'm just curious about serviceability. Yes, the batteries are actually right where the gas tank used to be. So that's really, really important. One, from a naval architect engineering standpoint, to not change the center of gravity of boats. Boats are built for a very specific center of gravity, so they sit properly in the water. Um, and the form factor is roughly the same size as the gas tank itself. So what we've done with our boat partners is to make sure that we have proper mounts for the batteries to live inside of the hull. They're sealed away underneath the deck so customers don't have access to high voltage, similar to how your car does it. Um, and then they put an extra large hatch, um, which is seamlessly integrated to the top of the floor plan. So we could pull the console up at our factory, drop batteries in. And now we're at the point to where some of our boat partners like Highfield, Scout, and others in the pipeline are learning to actually rig our battery packs and our propulsion systems at their facilities and then sell our outboards with their boats as a turnkey package to their dealers and customers. Tell me about charging. Is this DC fast charging or only AC? We are DC fast charging compatible and there are very few DC fast chargers that are on the waterfront today. Right. We're starting to see them emerge um, with early adopters being mostly rental fleet markets so they can have turnover in the middle of the day and rent the boat out for a second trip. But for more, most recreational customers, you're charging overnight, you're achieving a full charge overnight off of AC power, and then you're leaving every day essentially with a full tank or a full battery. Right, and you know, for the use case for a boat to be electric makes so much sense. I mean, especially just, just in terms of sound, I have not ever been on an electric boat. We need to change that, Dalen, at some point. <laughs> let's but do it. How much quieter is this engine than, let's say, a four-stroke Yamaha 150? It's something I can tell you that we are working to measure. Just the experience of being out there on one of our systems compared to you know, a Yamaha or a Mercury outboard motor, it truly is night and day, no exaggeration. Um, you can have a conversation at slow speeds, not even really realize that the outboard's on. Right. And then when you're up at planing speed, you're noticing sounds and things about boats that you never even heard before. Like the splashing of the water against you know, the hull of the boat and even the scuppers is something that I've more recently complained about. Wasn't a sound that I was really noticing. Um, on a conventional boat with in a uh, internal combustion engine. But for us, you're hearing all the little rattling and other noises that boats make. Is the battery pack that you put in here, is that an LFP or is that, um, what, what kind of chemistry do you, are you using? The chemistry that we're using is NCM. NCM, um, okay. Yes, yes. So uh, the trade-off there being better energy density, um, which we feel is a little bit um, better match for the marine application because boats are about a thousand or water's a thousand times denser than air and boats need a lot of horsepower to just continuously move through the water at planing right. speed. And then as far as maintenance goes compared to let's say a gas engine four stroke, I would imagine less maintenance, is that correct? You'd absolutely be correct. And I could tell you a little bit more about that and just looking at the back of the outboard itself yeah. and everything that we've done there to innovate. What I'd love for you to do is go super geeky. Talk, <laughs> like get into it as much as you can. Sure. For, from just a number standpoint, I won't understand it, but I'm sure some of the people <laughs> out there, some of my viewers will, but please, you know, let it rip. Let's do it. So I think this, this angle really sums it up very well in what we've actually done here at Flux Marine. So overall, we've shaved about 100 pounds off of the outboard, which is really important so we can add that battery weight back into the boat to give you that extra range and performance that you're looking for. Um, so on the lower unit itself, you've probably never seen an, an outboard lower unit that looks like this. Usually it's a single strut that comes through the water. It has a drive shaft that goes down at a right angle through bevel gears onto the prop shaft. So what we've actually done is we've created dual struts, as we call them, um, with a belt drive system that we're spinning through the dual struts, unobstructed, not touching the sides of the struts at all, so there's no wear or tear. Um, it's a carbon tensile belt. It doesn't expand. It's lightly lubricated just to keep it super you happy. Have any 90 degrees. And there's no 90 degree transfer of power. Is there any regen when you're coming off plane? There is regen capability in the future. Um, okay. We're not doing it just yet, gotcha. but it's definitely a feature that we're, we're excited about. This lower unit design, as we've made the lower unit, the, the bullet specifically, much smaller because we don't have through hub exhaust, it's been a much larger propeller that has larger blade to area ratio to take advantage of all that torque. Um, 
combined with the belt drive system, we're actually almost 97, if not greater, percent efficient wow. compared to the efficiency of a traditional outboard motor, which is 87 percent efficient. There's no way getting around it today. Battery technology, I mean, batteries are not as efficient as a full tank of gasoline. So you have to stack other efficiencies if you're going to be competitive on range and speed and ultimately performance um, to have a, a lighter, faster package. And that's something that we've paid very, very close attention to at Flux Marine. The use case of having electricity, you know, obviously level two, I mean, 30 amp is everywhere at every dock. Right? Correct. And what happens to boats for the most part? 95% of the time, they're just sitting on the dock. And so when people are, you know, this is not something electric uh, that we're going to see anytime soon for cruising major distances. But if you're just going out to your favorite cove, sitting on the hook and then uh, coming back, maybe playing around with the toys and the kids for, for the day, electric is the perfect use case here. So what other what other manufacturers are starting to see this that are mainstream manufacturers mm. as opposed to let's say folks that are looking to retrofit mm -hmm. so high field is absolutely one of our biggest partners they're actually the largest rigid inflatable manufacturer in the world by volume um, there's a couple of other rigid inflatable manufacturers that are in the queue right now we haven't uh, officially announced those partnerships yet but they i'm excited to be able to talk about them in the next couple of months we're also partnered with scout boats Scout makes boats in South Carolina that make center consoles and dual consoles. Awesome. awesome boats. Um, very, very well known brand. Yeah, very familiar with them. Yes. So. Um, and then working with flagship pontoons. Flagship pontoons. Yes. There, am I wrong that this is not a fiberglass hull, this high field? Just, I know that's not necessarily about flux, but, but can you just tell me what, yes. how the, the, the construction of this hard shell? hard bottom boat is? That's correct. So you're, you're absolutely correct. So this is an aluminum hull. Um, and what's interesting about aluminum for something like Origin Inflatable is you're able to now actually beach the hull without having to worry about damaging the fiberglass. Mm -hmm. So, you know, worst case scenario, you put a dent in this hull, um, but you're not cracking it and there's no leaks. So a super, super versatile boat from Highfield. Once again, I think that's really the brand and what pulls people towards Highfield specifically and Origin Inflatable boats. And is the aluminum hull, does that have a savings in weight as well? It does. It does. It does. Okay. So this hull is is fairly light for its class, gotcha. um, which absolutely helps. You know, any bit of rain or of weight that you could shave off of a hull usually translates into more range. So a setup like this, what 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 is what does this cost? This system, as it sits, is around one hundred and ten thousand dollars. One hundred and ten. Yes. Okay. And there is no there's no it's not big enough for a porta potty down below in the center console. What What is this, a 20? This is a 22. 22, okay. Yes. I love it. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, and I love the application. I love what you guys are doing and the passion. When I spoke to your team, I think it was uh, Annie down in Miami. Yes. Um, that was great. How many different motors uh, do you make? And uh, tell me a little bit about them. Right now, it's just the one outboard motor. We can scale it up because the batteries are modular. So if you had something like a you know 18 foot Boston Whaler, um, we could put fewer batteries on that boat and we could appropriately size through software the outboard as to not overpower the boat in the transom. Have you ever put twins or triples? We absolutely have. That's a great question. That's where I was going next. So we've stacked uh, twin outboard motors on upwards of a 32 foot Nice. Um, rigid inflatable boat. This was a very interesting one, carbon fiber um, with a, uh, a foil assist actually. So once again, getting some of that hull out of the water, making it more efficient, yeah. that translates to speed and range. That was a really, really exciting project. And we're starting to do more dual outboard applications. Wow. Well, Daley, thank you so much for coming down to uh, New Haven, Connecticut here and displaying the Flux Marine uh, integration with this high field. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. I wish you guys nothing but the best luck, but I don't think you need luck. <laughs> you guys are nailing it because all I really see, I don't really know the market that well, but I do see Flux out there. They're getting out there to the public. And I would imagine you're having a lot of backdoor conversations with manufacturers. I encourage you to reach out to, I'll put, uh, I'll put your contact information in the video here uh, down in the description. And uh, everyone, thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave. Dalen, thank you so much for coming on the channel. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you, guys.